Stay. You ready, Blue? Go! Okay, drop. Good girl, Blue. Hey everybody, before I head back into the red barn to continue with that work, I wanted to give everybody an update concerning the small house idea I was developing to build in the back acres of the property. I point that way because that's the back acres, of course. I probably could have mentioned this about two weeks ago, but uh, bad news travels slowly, I guess. And the short of it is that, and I'm good, it was, you know, it's the initial steps, it's the initial stages of the development of a project like this. You can see everything's done by hand. There are no official drawings here. That's from the internet. Um, whenever you start with a project like this, believe me, whenever you start with building any kind of structure from 10 feet by 10 feet and larger, check with your municipality. Go to the building department and uh, talk with a building official and find out what you can and you can't do and uh, what type of permits you need. So anyways, I headed over to my building department, spoke with the gentleman who I've worked with quite closely concerning things I've already done here on this property. And uh, unfortunately, it is not possible to put up a house smaller than a thousand square feet in this municipality. I don't think there's any way around it. These ones that I've been kind of uh, fooling around with are anywhere from about 350 to 400 square feet. So, the project of building a small house on the property here is on hold for now. Um, I am thinking about ways that I could put up a thousand foot square structure. I'm not keen to do that. I like the uh, idea of uh, have something, having something smaller on this property. I've got a home in Ottawa, but uh, be that as it may, as I've mentioned, I've got that thousand square foot minimum. And so um, I'm going to be rethinking this idea. So this project idea is not going to be moving as quickly as I had hoped. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Woodland Reboot. Let's head inside and get busy with today's activity. We've got the solar panels juiced up, the power's flowing. We've got the Ford 9N project underway. The parts are off getting uh, repaired. Again, the pump's been removed. That's off getting repaired. My plan over the next six months, yes, six months, it's gonna take some time, is to insulate the roof, all the walls, and uh, add some heating. In fact, when I get the heating installed, it might even be this time next year. Now, something I've wanted to do is if you look up here, up along where the trusses sit on the beam up there, and I had this approved by my building inspector, so I don't want to have everybody writing in and telling me about how bad the design is. An actual building inspector approved it. Instead of uh, any kind of metal tie, you can see that I created these blocks, and that's one of the ways that we tied the trusses into the walls. Now, you'll also see, if you look closely there and right there, that I've also started to add some strong tie hardware to improve and increase the tie-in in in the building structure. So I've been out, as I've indicated, and I bought a series of 18 inch bars and many of you know what those are. Those are the usual Simpson ties. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do the work of installing those and just making the integrity of the uh, structure a little bit stronger all the way around. And what you need for this job, of course, are the various strong tie, Simpson strong tie materials, including um, these types of screws, these connectors. They're specifically designed by Simpson strong tie for attaching this type of hardware to a structure. Let's head up this ladder and start attaching some of those strong ties. Never safe doing the one-handed ladder climb, but it's not too bad. And of course, I forgot my strong ties. Genius. Didn't put that one in all the way. 
get that fixed in a second. And this is why I have my hammer and my hole punch where I'm joining the strong tie into where we've got this mesh. Sometimes the holes don't line up, so we go ahead and we create our own. Takes a few whacks. Remember, all of this is, is, an, is an effort to make these uh, the joint with the truss is that much better. Definitely an improvement. Again, the building inspector approved these blocks. You can see the design. Goes from the beam and several heavy screws through the mesh into the block. Anyways, there's the soffit. All's looking good, nice and solid. Let's get this ladder moved. All right, let's head back up and get another series of ties in place. This one requires a long one. Let's try to put these ones in a little bit better than that last one that I did. I know I'm gonna hear it from you guys about my lack of ladder safety, but to get the shot, right? All right, that one's already in better than the last one. I want to show you what I'm doing here with this longer piece. So we've got this longer piece. I want to tie in the truss to the beam to the post right here. So we've got this longer piece. They don't match up perfectly. It's not what exactly they're 100% designed to do. But again, this is a vast improvement in terms of the tie-in system that I have currently going on. It's not a vast improvement. It's an improvement and um, we'll definitely make the system better. You can also see I've got this hitch here. What I've been doing is bending them. Like I'll, I'll put a screw hole in right there. It bends the tie, which I'm sure is not ideal, but then I bend it back and attach it. Again, better than what currently is in place. I'm not sure 100% this is needed, but again, in my mind, I believe it's an improvement. It makes it work better. By doing this, you can see that I've got the strong tie here, ties into the truss, but also through this mesh. I think gives it a little bit extra strength. Maybe I'm wrong, someone out there is gonna correct me. Um, and then down here, I've got a 18 inch tie, connects to the 
truss tie, and then down to the post here. This is in addition to what already exists in terms of very sizable construction screws, the heavy duty construction screws that you can see here and here that tie into this block. This block is tied with heavy screws into the beam and the beam itself is screwed to the post in several locations on each side of the beam itself. Okay, back here on my third or fourth day now, maybe doing an hour or two each time I've done it. Let's get busy for another couple of hours. I'm right there where the ladder is and I just need to get over here to this corner. Okay, we've come to the end of this little project. As you can see, I have all of the ties in place on this side, back wall, I don't know if you can see them, and then again going down the long wall there and a couple on the front wall also. I've got an extra one. In the back corner, I have this funny little structure. I don't know if any of you have ever wondered about it. I put together what I thought was going to be a little bit of a painting booth for my daughter. She then lost interest. With a painting booth in the way, it's been hard to get access to that back top corner where this would go, as well as a truss tie. I'll get that in the coming weeks, maybe. I'm continuing a cleanup. As you can see, it's pretty tidy up here at the front of the building. A little bit cluttered and messy at the back of the building. So I'm gonna continue with that cleanup, and when I get to the back there, I might remove the top, giving me access up to that corner. Also, with any luck, I'll have the hydraulic pump back from the welder and hopefully I can get that slapped together again because uh, there are some things I'd like to get done with my Ford 9N. Okay everybody, thanks for coming in to see what I'm up to here at the Woodland Reboot. Everyone take care and hope to see you around for the next video. Stay. You ready Blue? Go! Okay, drop. Good girl, Blue.